Radiant Team Pick. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. There it is. Yeah, I would agree. A uh, quick technical question about uh, just this cast. Uh, you said you had the wrong mic selected. Were you by chance looping my audio into Dota TV? Because I see some tweets. It's so we'll just hope we'll hope that's fixed. All right, let us know, guys, either on Twitter or on the Twitch chat. One of those is easier to read. I think you can probably figure it out. Um, yeah. All right. So, anti mage, phantom assassin. As we wait for everyone to pick up their heroes, Pili die will be on the Sand King. Not too much of a surprise. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Yes, he does. I'm sure he's uh, loving Keep everything about 6.82 as he gets to play Naga and, and heroes like terribly just about every other game. As uh... Yeah, that's true. Do you think the Terrorblade nerf is that bad? Just the extra damage out to the illusions? Yeah, I mean, still though, his tower pushing is terrifying. It gets online really early. The metamorphosis damage is still pretty unreal, but maybe a little bit easier to deal with it if you, uh, you know, put your team's assets towards that. But here we go. Let's do some introductions. I'll start with Secret here as we start off on this game. The Summit 2 online group stage is brought to you by G2A.com. It's Secret on the Radiant Puppy here on the Mirana shooting out an arrow, and it will land on Pili Die. Who else would it land on at the start of this game? Koro going to jump forward, and that's going to be the early, early first blood, so... Kuroki off to a good start in his, well, no, not so new role, but he is now a core hero. But he's playing on the PA. We've got S4, as mentioned. Uh, he'll be on the mid lane. We've got Simba. That's his new name, so it's it's just Simba playing the Nature's Prophet. Big Daddy No-Tail on the EO. And, yeah, I think we took care of everybody there. The battle begins. I've been calling it Centaur Windrunner on accident, so you did better than me. Oh, look at this middle lane, though. The arrow you'd never expect it to come from that angle. Puppy, poised up behind the middle tier one, lands it onto Feta, and another early kill for Team Secret. They're out 2 0. And I mean, first bloods, like we saw the one pilot I give up. Sure, it's the 400 gold. You don't give away too much because you don't have any gold to lose at that point of the game. The experience was split like four ways, but now the second kill coming out in the middle lane with, uh, I guess, a one hero rotation because Big Daddy No Tail is obviously just in the middle lane. But a nice start for Secret. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like he's gonna have trouble. He's at level two right now, and it's a duo lane, and they're both at level two. Another arrow searching. It won't land, but I don't think they're gonna need it. Big Daddy gonna start tanking up the tower just a little bit. Crypt Swarm goes out trying to at least net a kill for his troubles, but he won't find it. Big Daddy gets pretty low, and unfortunately, not only is there no invoker, 
Probably wouldn't have enough points in Exhort anyways. Big Daddy gonna live. He's got that bottle up and running. Already early on, now Pile Die rotates over. Kuroki taking some tower hits. No points in Blur yet, but now here comes the overcharge. Another arrow gonna be dodged. Pile Die expects it. And well, this, this nuisance of three heroes in the middle lane. Gonna find another rune and probably go back to killing. Yeah, I mean, at least you'd be able to blink away with the anti-mage, so he'd have some escape built in, although Puppy with his arrows from weird angles have been pretty effective. But uh, let's check out Eternal Envy. Still farming very well, and I would expect that they can leave him here against the Nature's Prophet. He's 17-5, and five, Nature's Prophet 3-1, and because the supports have been there, like you said. Cloud9, they like to secure their safe lane. Owie getting some stacks. Pile I die, getting some stacks. So securing the safe lane, securing the jungle, and an early blink dagger timing on Pile I die. They're stacking camps, man. <laughs> yeah, well, actually, I guess some of those could be for Death Prophet, too, if she needs to catch up. Pile dies here. Trying for the double, but he can't find it. Koro no. will get the kill. Still no points in Blur, so the tower will bring him down. AUI is going to be here as well. One more Arcane Bolt onto Big Daddy, or just an auto attack with that range. And that'll be enough, so Cloud9 on the board. It's now 4-2. to two. As we look bottom, was there a rune bottom? No, they're looking to secure it already, though. Both the Bone7 and Puppy were looking for um, positioning around the bottom rune, but looks like Bone7 walking back to base. Puppy going to look for some more blood in the middle lane. Yeah, just sitting on brown boots. We'll see if he finishes Tranquils. It seems like finishing Tranquils and then getting the Blink Dagger is, is the most common on Pintar War Runner. Yeah, he will get the Ring of Protection, so... But the Mana Boot's already out on S4, so he's gonna continue to just dominate this lane, I would think. Yeah, only level 4. He doesn't want to give up the lane, though. I mean, obviously, he could just walk into the jungle and start doing that. But we see Fada again in the middle lane in trouble. There's an Ancient Seal out onto Kuro. But now he does have one point in Blur, so the 20% evasion able to take a couple more hits. Or not take, rather. Uh, but AUI in trouble. The Stifling Dagger goes out, slows him down. The arrow to connect. Now Simba going to teleport in. And they'll get another kill. Now 6-2. to two. TP coming in. It's Pile I Die, but a little too late. He's lucky the arrow was already used, coming off a cooldown in three, but would have been searching for anyone TPing in. Radiant's top tower is under attack. Yeah, maybe Pilot Eye can make the difference though. He's got his brown boots. I believe he probably started with them anyways. But now two points in Burrow Strike, so a little bit more range potential for the two-man Burrow. It's not too hard as uh, Kuroki and Big Daddy are always going to be standing somewhat close. Forced by, of course, the tether range there, but... We'll see what he can do to make a difference. As the runes are up at six minutes, it's going to be a bounty up top. Secret have got that one. Pile I die in the bottom lane picks up the invis. But Bone Seven, he actually did just take a death while we were uh, talking about the mid lane happenings, and he's back here again, very very low. There's the burrow we were talking about for Bone Seven. He's going to go down again to the stop. This time at least Puppy is going to fall. So it's a one for one trade thus far. Now they try to escape danger. All oh, Pile I die and AUI coming together there. They'll bring down Simba. And then middle lane. Feta not having a good time. Gonna be crit down again. Level 6 on the Phantom Assassin, only level 5 on Death Prophet. Oh, there's a relocate. No! It's into the bottom lane. You Skyrath Mage, there. no longer. You will not see beyond the Phantom Bear.
yeah, these are really hurting. Not gonna be getting it towards that phase. The drums, and well, Wow, he actually doesn't even have a bottle. Just checking the courier. There's only a TP and a clarity on there. So just the null talisman he started with, and that is it. He's really, really hurting. Just looking at net worth, even though it's early, he's third to last. 1.4k being surpassed by even his own supports. Pile I die ahead of his mid laner. Yeah, yeah, there's that wraparound, and it is nighttime as well. It's about to flip over today in about 10 seconds, but not before Simba falls. He tries to go for the sprout to stop the vision. There's a blink from EE, anyways. Uh, they will find the kill. A nice one. It's the first putting EE on the board as he will be looking towards that battle fury. Not a naked one, though. He does go for the treads. Claim more and 40 gold if he wants it. Radiant structures are fortified. Yeah, in trouble again. The Sprout Arrow combo. And now they're going to throw the Primal Split into this as well. The first of the game. That will cancel the TP and it will kill the Centaur War Runner 11 to 5 as they find another kill and would hope to transition this one into some tower pushing as people dying so fast. Skyrath Mage going to get crit down. We've got Io. He's leaving. That was not a very far relocate. Uh, they were just hoping someone was there catching them out of position, but not going to do so. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Dyer's structures are 45. Yeah, as I would got him out, because obviously that's who they were looking for. He's level 6 now, and he will opt to put the point in uh, into his alt exorcism, Dyer's but with only 2 in Witchcraft, 3 in Crypt Swarm, uh, we see a lot of the Death Prophet players like, waiting until 8. Yeah, what is it? Yeah, 8 15. Yeah, so that basically takes away your sustained team fight. You pick the Death Prophet, you like to keep her alive. The Exorcism on the battlefield just being really annoying. It does a ton of damage. Can transition those team fights into pushing, but not with Fata's current state. Maybe they give him some of the jungle, but I'm worried because as soon as Anti Mage in the next minute or like four minutes here picks up the Battle Fury, the jungle's gonna be his, and then Fata's still really not gonna have a place to farm. Yeah, 73 last, it's 18 denies, he's second in net worth, he doesn't have quite as many kills as Kuroki does, but they're about 100 gold between them, Kuroki at 5.1k, Anti-Mage at 5k, and then S4, who's been doing very well in the bottom lane at 4.7, they're smoked up now in the middle lane, looking for some more kills, we'll find a bounty rune as well, but it's, well, Cloud9 basically protecting Pylai die right now, and like you said, it's the Blink Daggers that will keep him in the game, and even though Fate is around, they're giving the farm to Pylai die, but here comes the dust, they're contesting this pool. If you pick a Sand King, the other team knows what you're doing with Sand King, and, well, they act on it. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Dyer's structures are fortified. Yep, so Secret uh, looking to basically keep the Dire jungle under wraps. They've, they've been spending a bit of time in there. Obviously, I was just circling that ward uh, that is spotting out that bigger fallen. camp. As Let me put it back to everyone's vision. S4 in the bottom lane, maybe waiting for some of his allies to TP in. Nope, not waiting at all. He's just going to go in, get the split off. There's no points in silence from Feta, so he can't stop it. And it's Brewmaster, 6.82C. That's a slower transformation now, so it's a little easier to cancel out. Some slight nerfs to the hero as they try to chase Bone7. Sifling Dagger gonna connect. No way to disjoint it because Bone7 is behind. No Blink Dagger. Pylai die now. Upper middle ground here in the Dire Jungle. And he's gonna go down. Big Daddy with the Spirits to the face. Picking up a double kill, actually. Are they relocating as well? Oh no, that was just... Simba going back to base. So kills all across the map for Team Secret. They lead by 10 right now. Quickly checking out the graphs. Already 5,000 gold advantage. About 2,000 experience for Team Secret.
Yeah, and I mean, if you stampede to get away from the brew ultimate, then you've got to worry about them being in a lane by yourself, or just being in a lane even with your team at this point, because the relocate's going to be there as well. Stampede will also help disengage from that. Uh, although I believe both of those ultimates were used in about the same place, both the primal spirit and the relocate uh, across the map there. So, 13 minutes in. Bounty rune. Pilot Eye's got it. He is a little more than halfway to the blink dagger, but still a ways off as he keeps going down. His stack was contested. Maybe they can find a kill on S4, but he's got a blink dagger and can just go to the trees. Yeah, well, 1v4 for now, but help's coming in, and there it is, the relocate, they're looking straight for Fana, he's gonna go down, Kuroki jumps over to AUI, AUI gonna go down, everyone melting like butter right now, to the strong right click, let's look at Phantom Assassin's items, also going for a Battle Fury, but he's got a Perseverance in the form of a Wisp, so he just starts with the Broadsword and the Claymore, big right click means big crits. Yeah, that'll be when Cloud9 really needs to make a stand to get back into this game because, well, the two core heroes aren't going to start farming. PA picked up her Battle Fury, and just a couple seconds after, Anti Mage, played by Eternal Envy, found his Battle Fury. So they're ready to go, they're ready to fight. PA probably going to be fighting a little bit more than the Anti Mage who will just want to farm. Actually, let's look at his skill build. Uh, okay, maxing out Blink, one point in the other two, and four in stats. But they're going to go on him right now. He's got to blink away into the tree line. They can get vision with the spirits, puppy, arrow. We're gonna be off the mark and they won't find the kill but they do stop him from farming disrupt his rotation eh, not too much as he just tp'd middle and he's already back to farming dyer's top tower is under attack dyer's structures are fortified yeah, it's gonna be on Simba here. There's the slow, the stampede, everything to chase him, but they're wasting a lot of time. They have to go very deep for this, and they haven't even found the kill yet. Moonlight Shadow gonna keep him alive. The relocate in and some other TPs, the Brewmaster Primal Split, the relocate in Cloud9. Their first offensive goes terribly wrong. They lose everybody. Three for nil. It's a 2,000 gold change, almost a 3k experience change. Advantage for Team Secret. Yep. <sighs> yeah, that was just pure game sense from Secret as well. Like, like no wards in their jungle. Maybe some were dewarded along the way or just ran out. I wasn't fully paying attention to that scenario, but... For the most part, it looks like no wards. Secret, again, keeping them aggressive as they try to push top and keep contesting those camps. Looking at Dire Vision, though? Nothing. They have nothing right now, and that's not good when you're playing against that Wisp. Yeah. Puppy's even got another ward in inventory. Sentry's ready to de-ward, or of course, stop the Sand King. Yeah, I mean, high risk, right? You gotta get back into this game somehow. Trying to find those kills on the team that is ahead. It's 6.82 after all, and they will find just a support. It's Puppy, second to last in net worth, but it's a kill for Cloud9, at least. So that's uh, a move in the right direction, as that nets them, what, about 700 gold, 700 experience in their favor. But look at this net worth difference between PA and AM. It's like 3k. Yeah, this is the third, right? This is going to be on cooldown now for 10 minutes, so... Alright, 
Alright, and they're gonna go stampede in right onto S4. He's silenced up. Can they bring him down in time? Yes, they can. The Burrow Strike, the Mystic Flare, even threw in an epicenter onto that, and Sentry dropped proactively there by Puppy. We'll find Pilot died, Pilot died to fall, but. One for two as looks like Feta dies elsewhere. He died up top once again at the hands of... Actually, who did he even die to? It must have been PA. Cause, okay, yeah, they relocate back in now. Big Daddy and Kuroki. Looking for uh, that anti-mage. Keeping the pressure on. Yeah, it is. What do you think about Orchid for Simba on the Prophet? Dyer's top power is under attack. He does have those. Alright, 19 minutes in. It's 22 to 7. The net worth leader. No surprise with how many times we've seen him kill people. 7 1 to 9. Kuroki at 11.4k net worth. Now looking for more in the middle lane. And will quickly decide against it. Big Daddy goes in for some assistance. Not really needed as, look at Big Daddy's items already. Obviously the mid lane went well for this pair. He's got a bottle, arcane boots, and a mechanism. And here's what you talked about moments ago. They got the Vlads up on the brew, and they're gonna go in to the Roshan pit. Fallen to Ravian's top tower is under attack. Yeah. Now let's say this game, let's say secret, they want to go high ground, they start let's say Cloud9 holds on and we start moving in to Dyer's the late game. Do you favor any lineup in particular? Like, Death Prophet obviously very behind. If she can catch up, if that's even possible, do you think they have a chance in the late game going against, you know, this PA and this Brewmaster who's still got about, what, 15 minutes or so before he falls off with his primal split? Radiant's bottom tower is under yeah. attack. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Oh, there they go. They try to go in Kuroki, but he's got the Aegis. Bone 7 gonna be forced to stampede. AUI gonna pay the price for his team's aggression. He will fall. Fortify available. They will actually use it for the tier 2, but keep in mind, guys, not gonna refresh the Fortify. That's only the tier 1s. At least for now. Wait, wait until 6.82D, I guess. Value. <laughs> He's got like a hundred more since then. Oh, I hear Bone 7 stomping, and it's going to be actually on S4. The Ancient Seal is there, but the reload kick comes in. They won't be able to save the Brewmaster, so he's going to fall. But Bone Seven's going to pay the price. Pilot Eye gets off his ultimate, but it's... Oh, it actually is a rank 2 ultimate. He's level 11, but even still, it wasn't super effective. The Wisp will go back towards the Ancients, and yeah. Probably will rejoin them in the bottom lane. Satanic delivered. That's the item choice here for the PA. I was expecting the Basher into Abyssal just, you know, to lock down the Anti-Mage, but we'll go for Satanic. Dyer's bottom tower has fallen. Tower is under attack. Yeah, and there's Kuroki. Yeah, it really is. Well, they got another game coming up, right? It's the next game after this will be Cloud9 Fanatic, so maybe they can take out some of their, uh, their revenge on the Fanatic stack. But for now, it's Secret dominating this best of one. And already, this Tier 3 tower, there's no Fortify that was used a couple minutes ago at the Tier 2. Going for Pilot Eye, Kuroki gonna have to maybe retreat out of this. Bone 7 tries to jump on S4, gets nothing out of it. Kuroki jumping over there, still has the Aegis, and that Satanic will... Oh, he decides to use it before dying, so he wants to stay in this for the long 
Long Haul going for Feta again. He's got no HP. At 22 minutes of the game, you don't normally see a Death Prophet just die that quickly, but he has nothing. Big Daddy, the Wisp, will actually fall here. Pylite die, making some plays here as Kuroki under the Tier 4 Towers with Moonlight Shadow, so that's not really helping out in this scenario. Big Daddy with the buyback will come back in, relocated. There's the Primal Split, trying to deal with the Terminal Envy. Won't be able to find him as he blinks out, but that's the range racks already gone. Now they start to work on the melee, and, well, no Fortify, so it's it's gonna fall. The damage dealers are dead for four more seconds. Both have buyback, but they don't want to use it. They'd rather lose one lane of racks. Pylai die, looking for the epicenter, finds two. It's gonna be enough to kill Kuroki, but Aegis, he'll be back in just a couple seconds. They're gonna S4, they're gonna be able to bring him down. Now it's Kuroki versus the world. Should probably just hit that building. I think Simba's gonna take care of that. He's got it. AUI with the all chat. Kuroki just murdering. I feel like every time this guy plays PA, he's just walking around the enemy base murdering people as, uh... E -E forced to blink back into the trees. Pylai die with another good Burrow Strike stun, but it's all too little, too late for Pylai die. They forced a buyback on AUI. Big Daddy. He had already bought back, and they won't even be able to bring him down. Bone Seven's gonna fall. There's another crit onto the buyback. Now looking for Pylai die yet again. Another stun. Kuroki. No BKB. He's a man. He doesn't need it. 5.4k in the bank, and I think finally. This base dive has, uh, no, maybe not finished. Kuroki's going in. That's not good. He's going to get stunned up there. This is a big kill to give away. Founding, Fountain Diving tries to pop the Satanic. Not going to be enough. And now Eternal Envy, stuck in the tree line, will blink out of the tree line. And he's running. Whew. It's going to be a chase. Oh, he stutter steps and walks straight into the arrow. Thinkest thee to frighten. Mistakes were made. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it really did seem greedy, like, Fado was just dying repeatedly in the middle lane while the supports were trying to get their own items, trying to stack up, or at least secure their own items later, stacking up the camps that could maybe get Fado back, but he kept dying. You see the Wisp, and you kind of, especially on Raiden, you've always got to expect there's going to be a duo lane in the mid lane if you see a Wisp. And they just had nothing to back up the Death Prophet. So maybe a more defensive support, just sort of chilling around in the middle lane for Fado could have made the difference. Radiance bottom tower is under attack. Radiant structures are yeah. fortified. I was thinking either Lich or Abaddon. Mainly just because I love Abaddon, so. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Radiance bottom tower has fallen. Yeah, I like that. And lifesteal stacks with Eye of Scotty, even though they both claim to be unique. So dude, that, he's got that going for him. But yeah, definitely one hit rampage. Actually, he's got the most HP. I would assume Centaur, and I'm actually incorrect, I think. Sand King has the most HP. <laughs> There you go. Decent amount of armor as well. He's picked up a Veil of Discord to make the epicenters a little more painful for Pylite Die, but an arrow surging, and that's going to be a five second one. The relocate coming in for this. If I could actually click on Eternal Envy, but okay, he'll be stunned for the entire duration. Buyback available, so that's not a game winning kill, but obviously very, very good for Secret. Potential to even force a buyback here. What's new? Can't throw if you were never uh, holding the ball. I guess. Whoa. I gotta, I just... Oh, sorry, go for it.
Yeah, she definitely is. I think, was it at ESL that Kuroki jumped up for like the five-man rampage, or was that slightly before in another online tournament? I can't quite remember. There's honestly too much Dota, so... Um, all right, they're trying to break the base, trying to force that buyback. 20 seconds left on the respawn timer here for Eternal Envy. They try to buy some time. Is that a Yule Scepter actually finished on Death Prophet? Ghost Scepter as well. Now she can maybe stay alive for somewhat of a team fight as they go back, focusing on the objectives. They don't want to throw the game away as 15,000 gold ahead, 12,000 experience ahead, and the Fortify goes, and they think that's enough, so they'll just back off, maybe wait for another creep wave, or try to find a pick elsewhere, or Roche. It's up soon. Yeah, they got two. One on Feta, one on AUI, so... The squishiest of the squish have picked up the Ghost Scepters. It'll help them a little bit, but then they gotta watch out for Starfall and the Thunderclap. Like, that's probably enough to kill AUI. <laughs> yeah. And Simba, yeah, does he respawn? It wasn't too much longer. Simba on the Nature's Prophet will go for just Tread Blink Mjolnir. Just looking to split push the lanes. Yeah. Probably one though, but I, I don't think Big Daddy's just gonna sit back. He wants some of the action as they're going for the roast. The Moonlight Shadow comes in. Bone Seven with the stomp onto Kuro, but do they have detection? It doesn't quite look like it. Pilot Guy the Veil onto two. That's a good start. Not even enough to kill the Wisp. And Wisp's gonna go ahead and get out of there. Pilot Die kind of sectioning him off a little bit. Now it's Feta trying to deal with not only three Brewlings, but also Kuroki. And okay, the Yule Scepters, the Cyclones. Everyone just spending some time in the sky. It's a good view from up there, I would think. As Feta comes down, he's greeted by an arrow from Puppy, and will die pretty much immediately afterwards, and they will find AUI. There's the Ghost Scepter. Let's see if, uh, okay, they'll kill the neutrals just in case. No mercy here from Kuroki. And now back to Roche. Is he going for the steal? Is he going for the manly place? He's got a slot open right now in that inventory. He's going for it. He's... Oh, yeah. He, he blinked over to get closer, and that was maybe not the right move, because once again, the Aegis is going to be back over on the Phantom Assassin, who at this point is just terrifying. Another arrow to connect. Puppy's been on point on this Marana, starting in the early game, and that's enough right there to just force out the GG call here in this uh, best of one round robin stage. And that was a change for some reason, this like insta pause upon disconnect. Radiant victory. Yeah, I mean, he got a great Battle Fury timing, but, well, he got the Battle Fury, then they're like, okay, now we'll deal with you. They put a little pressure on him. Obviously,